Coming in at number 5 we have the Ferryman. This is a demon who appears for a short amount of time in a movie that I didn't particularly enjoy, but he's certainly made an impact on a lot of people, that's for sure. Released in 2019 and directed by Gary Doberman, Annabelle Comes Home is the seventh installment in the Conjuring universe and the sequel to Annabelle and Annabelle Creation. Starring the likes of McKenna Grace, Madison Eisman and Katie Sarif, along with Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson, the film follows the Warrens child Judy who is left alone with her babysitter when her parents go to investigate a case. However, when an unexpected guest arrives, Annabelle is set free and demonic activity spirals inside of the home. Now, we're not going to be focusing on Annabelle for this number, we're saving her for later. Instead, we'll be discussing The Ferryman. The Ferryman is one of the many antagonists in the Conjuring franchise, making his first appearance in Annabelle Comes Home. He is a dark and evil spirit who is rumoured to take souls to the afterlife for a price. But instead of delivering them to the afterlife, he collects them and tortures them. The ferryman was investigated by Ed and Lorraine Warren after the death of a girl by its hands. They conducted interviews by those affected who told them stories of the ferryman who demanded a toll, or else their souls would be left. The Warrens collected coins from corpses that were cursed by the demon and had them blessed and locked away in their museum. However, in Annabelle Comes Home, this demon is woken up when the coins are tampered with, unleashing the hellish force and he is truly terrifying to behold. Before we jump into number 4, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, it really helps out a lot in the YouTube algorithm. Coming in at number 4 we have Bathsheba Sherman. Bathsheba Sherman was the first villain to traumatise all of us in the Conjuring universe, with her first appearing in The Conjuring. Released in 2013 and directed by James Wan, The Conjuring of course stars Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga as Ed and Lorraine Warren, paranormal investigators famous for being involved in prominent cases of hauntings, including the Amityville Horror. In the movie, the couple are contacted by the parents, a family who recently moved into a farmhouse and become tormented by a demonic presence inside of the home, with Ed and Lorraine Warren attempting to rid the family of the entity. Now Bathsheba Sherman is the main antagonist of The Conjuring. She torments the family and possesses the mother Carolyn. Now Bathsheba was a woman born in 1812 who was said to be related to a woman executed for witchcraft in Salem back in 1692. Jumping forward in time, she went on to marry a rich farmer and gave birth to a child, however she attempted to use this child as a sacrifice to the devil, but was ultimately caught by her husband. Exposed, she climbed a tree on her property, proclaimed her love for the devil and proceeded to curse those who would take her land, before ultimately taking her own life. Her spirit would now reside on the land and torment all those who tried to live there, aka the Perrin family who become the demon's victims, before the Warrens step in to put an end to it. Coming in at number 3 we have La Llorona, hailing from arguably the worst movie on our entire List, La Llorona is a terrifying entity that is not to be messed with. Released in 2019 and directed by Michael Chavez, The Curse of La Llorona is a supernatural horror starring the likes of Linda Cardellini, Raymond Cruz and Patricia Velasquez, and follows a mother in 1973 who must save her children from a malevolent spirit named La Llorona and wishes to steal them. In real life, this spirit is also referred to as the Weeping Woman or the Wailer and is a spirit who roams waterfront areas mourning her drowned children. Legend states that a beautiful woman named Maria married a rich conquistador with whom she bore two children. However, on one particular day she caught her husband with another woman and in a fit of rage she drowned her children, with her suffering immediate regret. She then drowned herself but was unable to enter the afterlife and instead was trapped in purgatory and roamed earth searching for children's steel. So of course this seemed to be the perfect supernatural story to bring into the Conjuring universe, however it failed to make any real kind of impact with the movie falling short. However, despite that the character of La Llorona is still pretty damn terrible terrifying nonetheless. But she doesn't scare me cause I ain't a child. Can't snatch me. Coming in at number 2 we have Annabelle. Annabelle is perhaps the most popular and feared demon in the Conjuring universe with her first appearing in The Conjuring before being introduced as the main antagonist in Annabelle, Annabelle Creation and Annabelle Comes Home. Annabelle is considered to be one of the most dangerous and haunted items collected by Ed and Lorraine Warren over the years with the demonic entity latching itself onto a porcelain doll, in the movies that is. In real life it took hold of a raggedy Ann doll. Now the Annabelle demon is a powerful demonic entity who 
torments those who are possession of the doll, with her moving around unseen. In The Conjuring where she first appeared, Annabelle was released by Bathsheba Sherman who we discussed before, with Bathsheba going to the home of the Warrens as revenge for investigating her home, and releasing Annabelle. However, let's look at the doll's backstory. In the movie Annabelle, a pregnant woman is gifted the doll by her husband. Not long after, Annabelle Higgins and her boyfriend, members of a satanic cult, break into the home, turning the doll into a conduit for evil when Annabelle takes her own life. A demon possesses the doll, posing as the ghost of Annabelle Higgins. We quickly discover how truly powerful Annabelle is when she begins to attract spirits from a nearby graveyard as the Warrens are attempting to transport her to their home. They manage to fashion a case out of glass from a decommissioned church though and the evil is contained, but for how long? And finally in at number 1 we have Valak the Nun. I mean there is no demon stronger and more terrifying than the evil Valak who first appeared in The Conjuring 2 before being the main antagonist in the prequel movie The Nun. Released in 2018 and directed by Corin Hardy, The Nun follows a Roman Catholic priest and a nun as they uncover a dark secret in 1952 Romania. Of course we see Bonnie Ahrens reprising her role as Valak the Demon Nun. As we know in The Conjuring 2, Valak was the antagonist who tormented Lorraine Warren, showing her horrific visions of her husband's potential death and fighting off against Against her at the end of the movie. Now, I won't spoil what happens there for those who haven't seen The Conjuring 2, so we'll primarily just focus on The Nun, the prequel of sorts that was really sh now in the prequel it is revealed that the monastery was built by a duke centuries prior who became obsessed with black magic and attempted to summon a demonic force, however before he could he was killed by fellow members of the Vatican and the rift was sealed with the blood of Christ. When the monastery gets bombed during world war 2 the evil spirit is released and takes on the form of a nun, with the demon being revealed to be Valak who is now walking freely around the monastery every night killing people one by one. She is truly terrifying in her physical form as the nun and is utterly relentless and despicable. She rarely speaks but is wickedly smart, even tricking the Warrens in The Conjuring 2. She also teamed up with Annabelle, making for two formidable yet terrifying opponents. Coming in at number 5, The Television. One of the many demonic entities hailing from Annabelle Comes Home, this one is short lived but definitely packed a punch, that's for sure. Now, Annabelle Comes Home sees Ed and Lorraine Warren heading out on yet another paranormal case, with them leaving their daughter Judy with her babysitter and a friend. However, things go awry when the friend Daniela unleashes Annabelle in the home, who in turn wakes up the demonic forces inside of the Warren Occult Museum. When Daniela gets trapped inside of the museum, she encounters some of the most terrifying entities, including including a demonic television. It's a brief scene with Daniela looking into the TV and seeing herself on screen, which is already creepy enough, but then the TV starts to show her images of items moving around the museum, before showing her own demise. It's a very quick but creepy moment that is thankfully thwarted when Judy comes in to halt the television's sinister plans, whatever they may have been. Before we jump into number 4, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, it really helps us out a lot. Coming in at number 4 we have Bill Wilkins. Bill. Bill. Bill, Bill, Bill who? My name is Bill Wilkins. One of two characters from The Conjuring 2 on our list, Bill Wilkins is a terrifying man who spooks the Hodgson family. Now I am very well aware that he isn't technically a demon, but he was being controlled by a demon, so let me have this, otherwise this list doesn't exist. The Conjuring 2 saw the return of Ed and Lorraine Warren, with them heading across the seas to the UK to visit the Hodgsons, a family who are tormented by a demon, with one of their daughters even being possessed by a former resident, resulting in some very frightening moments. Now Bill Wilkins is the former resident who possesses Janet. He was a 72 year old man who died after he went blind and had a hemorrhage. Bleak. He was incredibly possessive of his home and died in his chair, that seems to be the source of some of the hauntings. Bill seems to have a strong hatred towards the Hodgson family simply because they live in his former home. He is very vengeful, angry and towards the family, particularly Janet. However, it is later revealed in a recording that Bill was simply being used by Valak the demon as a way to torment Ed and Lorraine Warren. Despite this fact, he is still a truly terrifying character throughout the movie, an imposing figure that you won't forget quickly. Come in 
at number three, we have the samurai. Now, very little is known about the samurai armor that appeared in Annabelle Comes Home. However, despite that fact, it is still incredibly unsettling. Released in 2019, Annabelle Comes Home once again follows the Warren family, but more specifically their daughter Judy and her babysitter who are left alone in the home while Ed and Lorraine investigate a case. Of course, things quickly go south with Annabelle being set free from her casing and demonic activity is unleashed around the home. Now, at one point in the movie, a friend Daniela heads inside of the Warren Occult Museum to try and find a way to contact her late father who had just passed. While inside, she touches various items, unlocking Annabelle's case in the process. With the demon being set loose, the energy brings the samurai and other spirits to life with them tormenting the home. In one moment, the helmet of the armor spins all the way around, startling Daniela with her frozen in place inside of the museum. Now, it is said that the samurai was an unnamed warrior in Japan who supposedly attacked and killed many innocent people, including families without any kind of remorse. The Warrens came into possession of the armor, blessed it, and sealed it away in their occult museum. Coming in at number two, Black Shuck. Shuck is a famous demon from mythology and a terrifying presence in Annabelle Comes Home, which we'll be discussing once again. What else can I say about it? Also considered to be a werewolf and a hellhound, the Black Shuck is a demonic beast that kills humans and animals alike. Now, like I said earlier, when Annabelle gets released from her case, all of the demonic forces inside of the Warren Occult Museum are woken up, including the Black Shuck, with it lurking the yard and attacking anyone who tries to flee the home. When Judy goes outside to retrieve an inhaler, the Black Shuck attacks the car, smashing the windows and clawing the roof, with the onslaught only ceasing when Annabelle is returned to her casing. Now, the Black Shuck Chuck was originally investigated by Ed and Lorraine Warren after a string of livestock deaths throughout England, with the couple tying it to the Hellhound. They were able to bind the Black Shuck and contain it inside of a book, with the book being blessed and placed inside of their museum. That was until Annabelle set it free for a period of time, allowing it to wreak havoc around the Warren home and terrifying everyone in the process, including us. And finally, in at number one, we have the Crooked Man, aka Balak. Now, I am slightly cheating with this number. Well, to be honest, I've kind of sort of cheated with this entire list. I know the Crooked Man is another form of Valak, but I'm going to ignore that fact right now and view him as his own individual entity. Otherwise, this part two wouldn't be able to exist. The Crooked Man appears in The Conjuring 2, a movie we discussed in our previous list. But I'll do a slight recap for those who missed it. As we know, Ed and Lorraine Warren head to the UK to tackle a new paranormal case involving a family who is tormented by a demon and a young girl who is seemingly possessed by a former resident of the home. We know by the end of the movie that the evil demon Valak is responsible for a lot of mayhem, with her influencing Bill Wilkins, who we discussed earlier, and of course appearing in one of her most horrifying forms as the Crooked Man, a character most people seem to remember the most about this movie. The Crooked Man is a gangly creature in a purple suit and is of course based on the nursery rhyme of the same name. I quote, There was a crooked man who walked a crooked mile. He found a crooked sixpence against a crooked style. He bought a crooked cat which caught a crooked mouse and they all lived together in a crooked little house. I mean, the rhyme alone is absolutely haunting, so the physical embodiment of it was always bound to be terrifying. The crooked man initially disguises itself as a barking dog to terrify the son, Billy. However, he soon unfurls its limbs and transforms into a hideous purple suit wearing creature. Now, a spin-off movie called The Crooked Man has been in talk since The Conjuring 2 came out. Whether we'll still get it, who knows? Probs not. We can't have nice things. Coming in at number five, we have The Ferryman. The Ferryman is an antagonist in the Conjuring franchise, specifically appearing in the 2019 film Annabelle Comes Home. Directed by Gary Doberman, the movie follows Judy and her babysitter who were left alone in their house after her parents, Ed and Lorraine Warren, leave to investigate a case. However, an unexpected guest sets Annabelle free, unleashing demonic activity in the house. Now, some backstory to this new character. The Ferryman was first investigated by demonologists Ed and Lorraine Warren after the death of a young girl by its hands. They interviewed those affected by the demon, who told them that the ferryman demanded a toll, or else it would take the souls of the departed. Ed and Lorraine were able to collect coins from corpses that were cursed by the entity, and had them blessed and locked away in their museum. However, in Annabelle Comes Home, things take a turn for the worse when the Warren's daughter accidentally sets a demon loose, drawing energy and bringing the ferryman and other spirits to its aid. And honestly, the ferryman is just downright terrifying. Coming in at number four, Annabelle. 
Annabelle the doll, or more specifically the Annabelle demon, is the secondary antagonist of the Conjuring franchise and also serves as the main antagonist of Annabelle, Annabelle creation and Annabelle comes home. This is a powerful demonic entity that despite being able to exist independent, frequently latches onto a porcelain doll to torment those who own it. It is also one of the artifacts taken by Ed and Lorraine Warren during one of their cases. Annabelle is actually considered to be their most dangerous and haunted item and has a habit of moving around unseen. According to the films it is said that the doll first became possessed after a 7 year old girl named Annabelle Higgins died from an intended murder. Although she is said to possess the spirit of an actual girl, many demonologists think that it is in fact more of an evil spirit than a demon. Annabelle is unbelievably scary but what is worse is the demon that follows it around. Now its true demonic form was portrayed by Joseph Beshera who also portrayed Bathsheba, someone we are going to discuss a little later on. Outside of the Conjuring universe, Annabelle is also mentioned in The Curse of La Llorona, when Anna Tate Garcia goes to ask advice from Father Perez on how to rid her family of La Llorona's curse, he explains that he previously did not believe in the supernatural until he had a run in with a doll. The movie then flashes back to Annabelle's attack on him. So is The Curse of La Llorona also in the Conjuring universe? That's my question. Am I late to the game? Does everyone know this? I don't know, I don't care. Coming in at number 3 we have the crooked man. To quote the lyrics of this creepy nursery rhyme, There was a crooked man and he walked a crooked mile. He found a crooked sixpence upon a crooked stile. He bought a crooked cat which caught a crooked mouse. And they all lived together in a little crooked house. It's my favourite song. The crooked man appears in The Conjuring 2 along with another notable demon that we will be discussing a little later on. He is the spirit from the eponymous English nursery rhyme and is a maniacal, lanky, crooked man who torments the young son of the Hodgson's family. The crooked man is also an upcoming horror movie and the ninth instalment in The Conjuring universe. In September 2018 it was announced that the movie was in the scripting process and that the studio intends to wait until the story is fully developed before production will begin. And honestly. I for one cannot wait because The Crooked Man was arguably the best part of The Conjuring 2. Quote me on that. Coming in at number 2, Bathsheba. Bathsheba Sherman is the main antagonist of The Conjuring which is loosely based on the true story of the haunting in Harrisville, Rhode Island. She is the evil spectre of an 1800s devil worshipper and witch. An interesting fact before we begin, despite being a female she was portrayed by Joseph Beshera who also played the lipstick face demon in Insidious and the demon in the prequel film Annabelle. Bathsheba is a malevolent, sadistic and murderous demon who haunts the Perrin household. She is bloodthirsty, unsympathetic, remorseless and uncaring or cruel. Along the way she possesses the mother of the Perrin family, turning her against her family and her children. She is vengeful, targeting any family that would take her land, and also the Warrens who attempted to investigate the land, leading to Bathsheba attempting to murder their daughter. Prior to haunting the Perrin family she was an enthusiastic and fanatical follower of Satanism, which led her to sacrifice her own child to Satan and was willing to die for his beliefs. To quote Carolyn and Lorraine in The Conjuring, how could a mother kill her own child? It was never a child to her. She just used her God given gift 